Now your car kit comes with airfoils. That's pretty high tech, pretty cool, huh? All right, and all you need to install those is just some drywall screws and finish washers. So let's get started. For the front axle, slide the airfoil over the front axle square stock. The airfoil must not extend into the spindle portion of the axle. Place a drywall screw through the finish washer and insert the screw with the washer through the rear surface of the axle square stock and then tighten the assembly with a hand screwdriver. Repeat those steps for the second airfoil hole attachment and the second front axle airfoil. By the way, you are not allowed to paint or cover the airfoils in any way, shape, or form. So let's move to the rear axle. And it's a lot like the front axle. You're just going to slip the airfoil over the rear axle square stock without the airfoil extending into the spindle area. You want to keep that flush. Clamps on real nice. It's a great fit. You press it on and just hold itself. Start putting your screws in. Place a drywall screw through a finish washer and insert them through the rear surface of the axle square stock and tighten the assembly with a hand screwdriver. Repeat those steps for the second airfoil hole attachment and the second rear axle airfoil. All right, guys, our car is built, but not quite ready for the track, okay? We wanna do the right thing to keep you heading straight down your groove, right in the center line, keep the car tracking straight. And that's gonna be where we do our axle alignment and triangulation. Now for that, I'm gonna show you how to do it with a tape measure so it's nice and simple. The great thing is, either car you build, you're gonna be able to use these same steps, okay? So, the goal here is to get our rear axle at a right angle relative to the body and the floorboard, okay? And that's what's gonna keep us going straight down the track, all right? Then, once we have that achieved, we'll be able to just tighten everything down and we'll be good to go. Grab me a tape measure, let's do this. Oh, I got it. When this happens, it makes your car appear as narrow as possible when it goes down the hill and reduces drag from air resistance. If the axle isn't at the right angle, the body of the car isn't pointed straight down the hill. You'll think your car isn't going straight and you'll turn too frequently to correct this and this is just gonna slow your car down. Triangulation uses the front kingpin and two outer points of the axle. Both the front and rear kingpin are drilled so that they are on a center line of the floorboard, so they're in a straight line to each other. The rear axle spindles are equal distances from the axle center kingpin. Here's how you use a tape measure to do your triangulation. You'll have to remove the brake pedal cable since it'll be in the way of the tape measure. Drill a quarter inch hole near the end of the tape measure. Take off the first nut only of the front axle kingpin. Slide the quarter inch hole end of the tape measure over the front axle kingpin. Slide out the tape measure to compare the measurements of the right and left sides of the rear axle. When both sides are equal distances, the axle is aligned. Help me over the steering wheel, Brittany. Thank you. Oh yeah, we're dead on. All right, now it's time to move on to the front axle alignment. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that the front axle is aligned so that the steering wheel is properly centered so the car goes down the track in a straight line. All righty, time for the front axle alignment. So I'll hand you that and hook it over the back axle. You wanna check that, okay, that's at 63 and a half. I like having you up front, that way you can look right down on the tape measure and make sure that we're being precise. Okay, now let's go to the other side here. Make sure that our steering wheel stayed centered, it sure has. And we are off. So now we're only at a 63 and a quarter here. We've got 63 and a half over there. That means we need to increase the tension on the left side of the axle, which is going to pull the axle back a little bit, that eighth inch, and get us into alignment. So we're going to do that right here. Tighten or loosen the steering cables at the cable adjuster eye bolt until the length is exactly the same on both sides. Tighten the nuts on both sides of the cable adjuster. Check the measurement to ensure that it is equal. Now the steering cable should be tight, but not so tight that it bows the front axle. Make sure that the axle turns the same direction as the steering wheel. Tighten all parts of the steering assembly as shown in step five. Okay, now that our triangulation is complete, you sure don't want to forget to hook up your brake pedal or put that top kingpin nut on your front axle. Safety first.